Affinity Designer comes with a huge range of adjustable vector shape tools to help you with your design work. You can find these by going over to the Tools panel at the side of your workspace, and we can start by clicking the Rectangle tool. You can simply click and drag to create a rectangle shape, or we can hold Shift to constrain the proportions and create an even square. If we click and drag with the rotation handles, we can rotate our shape, or by holding Shift at the same time, we can constrain the rotation to 15 degree increments. Now let's duplicate this shape with Command J on Mac or Control J on Windows, and we can use the Flip Horizontal Transform option in the top of the toolbar, like so. Now we've created this X shape, let's use Command G on Mac or Control G on Windows to group these two shapes together. Let's change the colour of our shapes to black with the colour panel, and let's change this square to a nice gradient colour instead, using the Fill tool. If I click here and here in the top corner, I'll change this colour to a yellow colour and change the lower node to more of an orange colour instead. Now we can use the layers panel to bring our X group above our rectangle and because we have snapping enabled, we can easily overlap the two shapes and place that perfectly in the middle of our square to create this simple hazardous warning symbol. One of the great things about the various shape tools is that they have very handy built-in settings available in the context toolbar. So let's change this sharp square to more of a rounded square instead by using the corner settings here, and we can increase the amount using the slider, or we can enter a specific amount with our keyboard. You'll notice that if you resize your shape, the settings remain the same, regardless of the shape size. So in this case, I may want to use the convert to curves option we have in the context toolbar, as this will lock in my settings and ensure my corners look correct at any chosen size. Now if we go back to our shape tools, you'll notice a small arrow in the corner of the rounded rectangle tool. This is indicating that there are more options available, and we can now see a huge range of additional tools to choose from. So let's begin by selecting the star tool. As with the rounded corners earlier, we can adjust this in a number of ways. We can start by adding a specific number of points, and then experimenting with the rest of the settings to create something very different to what we've started off with. And you'll also notice these orange dots allowing us to make our changes within the shape itself. We're also given this handy visual prompt to show us when we're at 90 degrees or if we're at one of the other preset angles we can choose from. Holding Option or Alt on the keyboard will allow us to ignore these snapping points if that's preferred too. If we select curved edges, we can now adjust our star to create more of a sun shape instead. And now we have this new shape, we can go to the presets option in the context toolbar and we can see we have a huge selection of other star shapes to choose from. In this particular case, let's create a new preset, call it New Sun, and click Create, and now we've made our new custom shape, which we can use again in the future. It's also worth mentioning that in the Preset Manager here, we can find all of the various shapes available for every tool, along with our own custom-made shapes at the bottom of the list too. We can also create custom categories, restore master presets, or import or export presets as well. But let's close this and go on to the last example where we're going to create our own emoji using a combination of shape tools together. Let's start by selecting the ellipse tool here in the middle and let's hold shift to make sure we create a perfect circle. Let's do the same thing again and create one of the eyes. I'm going to change the color to black using the color panel and duplicate this ellipse using Command J or Control J on Windows. Now change this to white. Use Shift to resize and place that in the corner to create a highlighted white area of the eye. We can now group these together using Shift again and Command G or Control G on Windows. And now let's use the Alt click and drag shortcut to duplicate and create two eyes. Use Shift to select the first group, Shift to select the back circle, and we're going to use our context toolbar to make sure our shapes are aligned centrally. For the final step, let's use the crescent tool in order to create the mouth shape. We'll need to use our keyboard modifiers, shown at the bottom of your screen, in the hint line, to help us draw out this shape correctly. In this case, we need to hold Shift to constrain the proportions, Command on Mac or Control on Windows to draw from the center, then Control on Mac or Right Mouse on Windows to change the direction. Now let's duplicate this shape and rotate it, using Shift to constrain the rotation. We'll change the color of both shapes too. And now using the layer panel, we will clip the second crescent inside the first one to create our mouth area. Finally, I'd like to round off the edges of the mouth, so let's click that shape first. 
Go to the corner tool on the left hand side. Marquee select the top two nodes and we can click and drag to round those off nicely. And there we have our finished emoji. So that was a run through of some of the shape tools and a few ways you might use them together in Affinity Designer. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.